This is Florida State wide receiver Johnny Wilson. Six foot seven, 230, ran the four, five, three and at the 40 yard dash, 82nd percentile short shuttle, 81st percentile broad jump. Those type of athletes, they play in the NBA. Yeah. And we have him at wide receiver. Some people want to move him to tight end. Nope. Well, guess what? Whenever I watched him, he was not just playing wide receiver. He was playing X receiver against press man coverage, winning with speed down the field. He obviously surprises corners with how fast he is. And then there was also some times where he can win on the slant routes and kind of bend his knees a little bit. So super outlier in terms of this size profile. But for a lot of these kind of day two, day three type of players with this type of uh, wingspan, for example, uh, there's also some really serious hits. So I think this is the, like the highest upside kind of day two, day three guy uh, at the position. You mentioned wingspan. I believe he has the longest arms ever recorded at the NFL yep. Combine for a wide receiver. There's a lot to dive into. I want to open this conversation by saying that this is a flag plant player for both Hayden and I. If you've watched our wide receiver rankings video, I have him as my, my wide receiver 12. He's Hayden's wide receiver 11. I'm sure that is maybe higher than any other person that makes football content out there. But we'll dive into why. Some numbers that matter. Yes, he has 11 drops over the last two seasons. Put a pin in that. In his first season at Florida State, after transferring from Arizona State, 27 of his 44 catches went for 15 plus yards. That means that 2022 season, his first with the Seminoles, is the best of any wide receiver prospect in this entire draft from a yards per route run standpoint. Again, that 2022 season with that one metric is better than Roma Dunze, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, who everyone to say. And Hayden, it goes beyond just a great singular season because I'm with you for a guy who is six foot six, 238 pounds. He wins early in his routes with slipperiness, with fluidity. And then as the season went along, you started finally unleashing this beast of a size of a wide receiver. Yeah. And the journey of watching him was so much fun. Totally fun. He could actually stack some corners on the perimeter on these just go balls down the field. And that explains why his, so many of his receptions are explosive plays. But I just want to reiterate, there are times where he actually sinks his hips and can actually move his body. And that kind of goes back to that 82nd percentile short shuttle where you can actually see him win on in breaking routes as well. The reasons why he wasn't super productive. Number one, there's a lot of target competition with uh, Florida State. You're talking about Keon Coleman. There's a tight end, Trey Benson there. The quarterback likes to scramble around. The quarterback also not very accurate. So that kind of explains why Johnny Wilson wasn't absolutely lighting things up in the box score, the drops, 11% drop rate, way too high. Does not trust his hands quite yet. And for somebody as big as he is, he kind of flails around at the contested catch point sometimes uh, where he doesn't like convert those as the high rate out there. But I think that he moves better. And if we can kind of iron out some of these drop issues and these yeah. hands issues, I think that he can be an X wide receiver, which is very hard to find. A lot of the players in the top 15 of, for most people rank our rankings are flankers they're slot wide receivers there's not that many x wide receivers especially at the kind of like round three border where johnny wilson is, is commonly mocked to so complete unique uh player out there i think that with a little bit more development uh with his hands i think that he's going to be uh, a very very fun player and hopefully he gets on the field early on i mentioned the journey of watching johnny wilson because early on during that 2023 season it very much was i'm just going to create the separation as an isolated outside wide receiver early in my route and try to sustain it as almost a small wide receiver mm -hmm. and he was still winning in that area at six foot six, 238 pounds, because he's a freak of an athlete who carries his weight and his frame and his length extremely well, but kept watching. Didn't love him in the big wide receiver game until I got to that Clemson contest. And then he started utilizing push offs, leaning in and then giving a little shove and winning along the sideline. Uh, in contest situations, you, you saw him with the timing of his jumps, with the timing of his hands into that diamond shape, using that length. And once you incorporate that big wide receiver game more consistently, man, that was the complete package at mm -hmm. both spots. That is so rare to find. And you talked about this in our wide receiver rankings video where so often we see outliers become the best at their positions. Guys who break the mold then become the identity of the NFL. 
I am not sitting here on April 12th saying that Johnny Wilson right now is the perfect prospect. But if the ascension of these talents and the trajectory of them become more consistent, and again, they start connecting on a more complete level, which I think is the path that he is on. This is one of those players who could look back on the 2024 NFL draft and say, oh man, he was one of the pillar pieces. He was one of the identities of that draft class. And he wasn't running any Mickey Mouse routes. He wasn't playing in the slot. He actually led this draft class with 52 yards per game as the isolated wide receiver. 52 yards per game. That's better than anybody. So the starting point on this trajectory that we're potentially getting on is not so bad for this type of archetype. We're talking about like the Darren Waller types. I've seen like Marquise Colston be comp to him. I think he can actually do some Kenny Galladay things as the X receiver winning downfield, huge contested catches and a little bit of speed to kind of catch some uh, players by by surprise. But there's even like higher uh, end outcomes. Like I think that you were going to talk about with some of these guys like Brandon Marshall, for example. Yeah. So this frame and this type of player either equals an outstanding talent or ones that we get nothing. really excited about and right. gives you absolutely nothing. I'll talk about that group first, and this is going to be a blast from the past for many of you that have followed NFL drafts for a while. Uh, can I interest you in a James Hardy from Indiana back in 2008, a Mario Arudia from Louisville in 2008, Ramsey's Barden in 2011, Brandon Coleman back in 2014, out of Rutgers, my guy, Hakeem Butler, 2019 uh -oh. <laughs> out of Iowa State. So it is quite easy to fall in love with these big guys that can move. But guess what? When they also get the nuance, the details, the want to of the game and can win with that athleticism plus the size, then you get Plaxico Burris, right? Who was six foot six. Then you get Brandon Marshall. You get Marcus Colston. You get Vincent Jackson, who I think is an incredible comparison here mm -hmm. coming out of Northern Colorado in 2005. And even, you know, the, the big Mike Williams from USC's too, Calvin Johnson. I mean, again, when they hit, they are a difference maker for your team. I do believe whatever club drafts him will need some type of plan, not a week one, most likely impact player here, but maybe mm -hmm. we get to week 12, week 14, or we get to week one of the 2025 season after some coaching, after some detail work, after again, right. There's just time to grow and get reps of a guy who understands the big and small game. And that's when I think the package can come together. I also really liked his interview. I mean, honestly, the film that like I said speaks for itself. There are many reps of him driving a corner basically into the concession stands uh, to buy a beer because he is just so much bigger out there. And I think some people want to say that, oh, he can block well and he's this big, put him at tight end. There's just no evidence that him with his hand in the dirt is going to work. And also, you just don't see tight ends go play X receiver and win 25 yards downfield. That's just so rare. And he, Johnny Wilson could actually do that. So I think there's a chance where his blocking comes into play and he can do like Gabe Davis style things. But Johnny Wilson is just a much more fluid athlete than yeah. Gabe Davis is and also just way bigger than he is where I think that there's a path to him getting on the field because uh, I think that there's a little fight to him. And then I think if he can kind of just get some more polish and now obviously an older prospect that didn't declare early, that's always been at power five schools. It's kind of questionable why he doesn't have that polish yet, but this is just a rare body type. And I think that most, most people view him as like a round four round five guy moving to tight end and stuff. I want to see him as a wide receiver. I actually want to see him totally. in the preseason because there's a chance where he's just going to be dunking on dudes uh, immediately. And if we take into context of where he was at Arizona State, I believe the same season is when Jane Daniels transferred. The same season is when Ricky Pearsall mm -hmm. transferred. So like there was something in the water of, hey, the trajectory of that college, of that university wasn't going right. in the path that these people wanted them to. So, hey, let's get out of there. And guess what? All three immediately then produced at their next school. Mm -hmm. I mean... What Johnny Wilson did during his first season at Florida State with questionable quarterback play, it's a big deal. It was incredibly productive. I want to add, there are moments where he looks like a fawn out there, like a newborn baby deer, okay? Mm -hmm. Where on elongated snaps, it is like an out of structure play. It does make that first and second step take a little bit of time moving laterally. And then the drops, 
if you just put together like his bad contested catch point situations or when he's shocked by the football, right. you're going to have an awful highlight reel there. Yep. I saw that less and less as I went along and it felt like he learned the game a little bit more. But again, I don't want to overlook that, hey, when he's not expecting the football or he has bad technique or mm -hmm. something else happens, uh, it looks terrible. It, it, yeah. it does. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not overlooking that. But I would rather look into the areas where he does win, which is as a legitimate wide receiver, not a, oh, this is an athletic big body type. Let's move him to tight end. Right. That is too simple of a mindset for me. And I think it's hard to find a sleeper like in round three, four that just looks like the average wide receiver. I would rather take the either super undersized guy or the super big guy or something unique about his profile and be like, maybe we're just misunderstanding how to use him. And I think that's exactly what Johnny Wilson is. And like you see this within the NBA all the time. You'll get these guys that are six, eight and kind of struggling as a rookie. And then all of a sudden, three years later, and now they're the all-star type. So it kind of maybe takes a little bit more time for somebody at six foot seven, who's actually trying to plant his foot and get up the, up the field for him to maybe take a couple extra years to kind of figure all that stuff out. So just, I think it's just at some point, just got to go for the outliers. There's no point in, in drafting a six foot guy, 200 pounds uh, that's been there for four years. I would at least rather roll the dice on somebody like this because there are too many high ceiling outcome types uh, in this mold. Yeah. Again, Hayden and I are kind of on an island with our lots of optimism and praise for him. There's many of other people who might have him as wide receiver 20 or later than that. Right. What I want you to take from this is to inspire you to go and watch him a little bit. Watch the highlights that Weaves has put up while doing this and go back and watch some full games if, if you want to and see which side of the coin you land on. Again, he is imperfect, but this is not even a mold of clay, you know, mm -hmm. someone who already has really positive traits that if you lean into those, put him in positions where he wins, which is that wide receiver and just let him make some mistakes yep. and learn the game for a little bit. This is the type of break the mold, an outlier that uh, doesn't come around very often. And it's, I think, flying under the radar in one of mm -hmm. the best wide receiver classes that we have seen. And I promise he will be very fun if he hits. Like if he yes. hits and you, if you want to join the train, it'll be a very fun ride uh, just to watch him go ball out. All right, go and watch all the other wide receivers, quarterbacks, every other prospect that we have on the channel. The more of you that hit that subscribe button, the cooler stuff, the more videos that we get to create for you. So we'll check in the next one.